Oh, I think I got all of my sneezing out of the way. Whew. Okay. Anyway. Hi there. I'm Kelsey. I make comics. Today we're going to be making comics, specifically a page from my current ongoing webcomic, The Legend of Jamie Roberts. The Legend of Jamie Roberts is the story of a genderqueer pirate and their two best friends treasure hunting in a land full of dragons. And things go awry. Right now we're about partway through chapter six, uh, not too far into chapter six. So now's a good time to catch up actually. Uh, and you can do so at the legend of Jamie Roberts, uh, dot com. link on the bottom of the screen there. Um, I stream here on YouTube and Twitch and Twitter. I simulcast on all three platforms. I stream on Tuesdays and Saturdays. I usually announce the uh, schedules ahead of time on Instagram, Kofi, and Patreon. All of those links can be found at the link tree slash Kelsey D. Pick a platform of your choice. I usually announce my uh, live stream schedule there. So, yeah, Tuesdays, Saturdays, 2 p.m. Eastern dated time is when I stream. There may be some exceptions, like if there's, if for any reason I decide to go to one, a convention, or if I'm sick, or work outside of the internet does not allow me to do so. Nothing. My cat Bree Bree also likes to make appearances on uh, live streams on occasion. Would you like to say hi to the people? You want to say hi? Oh, come here. Stop eating the cardboard. Yes. Oh, this is Bree Bree. Don't try to run away. Accept my love. Yes. There we go. Accept my love. This is Bree Bree. She is, believe it or not, 15 years old. And I love her. She is such a cranky old lady and she argues with me every day. But that's okay. It, she's not running away, so it's not torture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Begrudging acceptance. Look at that. Begrudging acceptance. Okay, now you can run away. Are you stuck? Are you stuck, madam? Oh, she's stuck. <laughs> we'll get the comics in a second, I promise. All right, are you done? Well, now she's just a sploot on the chair. Hold on. Okay. You done? Oh, maybe she, maybe she wants to stick around and hang out in my lap. She sometimes does that. You want to hang out on my lap? I'm going to be drawing comics. We'll see what she does. Because sometimes whenever I sit down and I draw comics, she has this tendency to, because um, this is the hand that I usually do hotkeys with. Um, she has a tendency to reach her paw up to this hand and try to like drag it down so that she can either hold my hand with her paw or make me snuggle her little face. Her little face is down here. She, you know, being a little old lady, she likes she likes to cuddle. All right, you're settling down? Well, she's settling down. She's not going anywhere. Yep, she's just gonna hang out for a bit. All right. That's fine with me. I just got to adjust the camera, but there we go. All right. Now, let's get back to drawing a page of The Legend of Jamie Roberts. Uh, we're actually tuning in at the near beginning of the process. We're going to do pencils first, and if time allows, we'll do the inks next. Um, I try to keep these streams between one and a half to two hours. I don't, I don't like to drag any longer than that. 
but today uh, we're starting with this page. Um, this will go live on the internet um, in a couple of weeks. So we're working ahead of schedule here, which is my preference. I would rather have comics made ahead of time. But we're going to start with the, what you're seeing right now are what's called the thumbnails, which is like super rough layouts of how the page is going to flow. I'm going to be doing a pencil layer on top of the thumbnails. And then once the pencils are done, we'll start with the inks. Now, when I do pencils, I like to draw each character in a different color and it begins. <sighs> Bri Bri does this thing. I, I told you at like this hand does all the hotkeys and Sometimes she'll decide that I'm not petting her enough, so she'll just reach up a paw and start to paw. What are you doing, baby? If I had the tech finesse, I would just set up a Bri Bri camera, <laughs> but I do not have the tech finesse yet. Drawing on the wrong layer. Here we go. Drawing with a pen. I like to use actual pencil tools. Okay, I wanted to get a good idea of where Jamie's eye line was going to be. So I'll hint a little bit about a blog post that I'll be writing up soon, probably today. Uh, but the blog post in question that I want to write today won't be out to the internet until probably next week. The blog post that I want to write about talks about uh, some particulars about Jamie Roberts's pitch. Because you know how I said that it's about uh, three pirates who go treasure hunting in a land full of dragons? Um, if you've been reading the comic very much, you'll note that a lot of the motifs of the locals uh, pull a lot from African and Native American art and art history. And the blog post that I want to write... Yes, baby, I know. The blog post that I want to write is going to address uh, colonialism and the legend of Jamie Roberts as a narrative. Because I'll give you I'll give you some like bullet points as to what's going to appear in this blog post. Oh my gosh, cat, I need to brush you. You are just shedding so much. So some of the bullet points about this blog post that I want to write. Um, I want to write this because of a lot. A like throwaway comment that I saw. Okay, she's not on my lap anymore. A throwaway comment that I saw on Twitter the other day. Um, because um, like I said, I'm on Twitter for the funsies, which means that I'm part of a lot of fandom circles. Um, and if you know anything about critical role, you know that the uh fandom for uh critical role is a character in and of itself. Um, I hesitate to call it a good or a bad, just that it's a character in and of itself. There was a piece of fan art that somebody had shared um, wherein the main characters of K-1 
campaign three, the campaign that's going on right now, are all rendered as if they're miniatures on a table and Matt Mercer is the DM. And it's a pretty cool piece of fan art. And then somebody on Twitter was like, cool, how about this be the main intro theme instead of the colonialism that is the main intro theme? And I'm like, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong that the current introduction sequence of uh, Critical Role uh, plays a lot with, you know, narratives that reference colonialism because the opening sequence it's Thursday night, um, shows the cast members being like explorers going through the jungle. Now, the reason why there will be people who will label this as colonialism is because there is an entire genre of literature. Um, Edgar Rice Burroughs partook in a lot in this of people, typically white men, going into African jungles to explore. Um, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Alan Quartermain, actually stars in one of such tales. I want to say it's called The King of Solomon or The Minds of Solomon. I don't remember which. Um, but Alan Quartermain is a main character of one such of these stories. And um, I bring this up because one of my big artistic influences with The Legend of Jamie Roberts is actually The Road to El Dorado. And The Road to El Dorado, when it first came out, a lot of people were um, prickly about it, <laughs> which is, you know, it, in, it indicates something about like how not well marketed it was. Bread Sword on YouTube actually has a really good video about the road to El Dorado. And in that, he, they, I want to say he, brings up that the marketing department in charge of the promotions for the road to El Dorado painted the road to El Dorado as like taking into account the native peoples and the history of the area and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then when the movie came out, it was about two basically bumbling idiots who stumble onto a conquistador ship, escape his clutches and crash onto Central America and are mistaken as gods by the high priest. Uh, for, and if any of y'all have seen the road to El Dorado, you know that not everybody buys that. Not everybody believes what the high priest says. <laughs> um, in fact, um, there's actually a local woman who helps the two bumbling idiots on their con. But this, this movie had a really big impact on me whenever I was like 12 or 13. It is still one of my favorite movies of all time. Now, if the marketing department was honest with themselves, the world de El Dorado would have been marketed as a callback to these buddy movies by Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. It was an entire series of films that was the road to insert location name here. And they were deliberately comedies. Like they, that was, that was their shtick. That was what they were marketed as. They were not pretending to be like anything other than a fun romp. Now, Part of the reason why The Road to El Dorado was a artistic influence on me was because I felt like, hold on, take two. I'm still scrambling my thoughts together. So whenever I take inspiration from something, and this is something I've talked about when talking about Charlie and Clow, because Charlie and Clow, I was inspired to make that after seeing Supernatural, the TV show, and going, what if that but a black woman is a main character. And 
something similar happened with the road to El Dorado because I looked at the road to El Dorado and I went, what if that, but the main characters actually tried to integrate themselves into the society. And we're not mistaken for gods. <laughs> so that was a good chunk of why the legend of Jamie Roberts started. Um, then I took two semesters of African art history studied some Native American literature for a semester and then lived in Navajo Nation for like three weeks. And this was all while I was in college. And the experience of having all of that, plus the influence of the Road to El Dorado, plus the influence of Mulan, because Mulan is another point of inspiration for the legend of Jamie Roberts, all of those talking points all kind of swirled together into this soup. And the reason why, here is why I want to write a blog post talking about uh, colonialism and the legend of Jamie Roberts. Because I do feel that in the hands of any other artist, the legend of Jamie Roberts could digress into a story about, oh, it's just a bunch of white people being saviors to a bunch of natives. And that is not the intent. That is not the intent with this story. Chapter six, yes, the pirates who are white are fighting alongside the natives of Korath who are people of color and they are fighting against monsters who are indigenous to these lands. Now, what I'm drawing here is the beginning steps of Jamie making a decision that is going to have repercussions throughout the rest of the story. So this isn't quite spoilery because they haven't done it yet, but this is the step leading up to this decision. The next couple of pages after this are going to be Jamie actively making the decision that reverberates throughout the rest of the story. Now, what that decision is, is they opt to do some magic that is particular to the locals, but they do it wrong. And it has repercussions and not everybody is grateful. I'm gonna try to keep this as spoiler light as possible. But what I want to do with this is I want to subvert the trope expectation of the white savior. Because I don't want this to be a story about white saviorism. I want this to be a story of, oh God, the white people done fucked up. And now they have to redeem themselves in the eyes of the locals. How are they going to do that? And this is the first page where I would argue the first the first step actually happened previously in like chapter four. That was chapter four was when Jamie saw the orb in Maliwe and decided, I'm going to take that. That is going to play into this page and the subsequent pages. And there will be consequences. Food for thought for y'all. Um, oh, I do see some comments. Good to see you, Callie. I see that you are lurking while working again. Marvelous. Glad to have you. And Carlos! Yay, I'm so glad you made it. I missed you on Saturday. But if you missed the Saturday stream too, it's archived on YouTube. Don't worry about it. You can check that out over at KelseyDCrawford.com or my YouTube channel, which you can find on my link tree. You know what, I'll just leave the link tree up because that has all of my links. It has The Legend of Jamie Roberts. It's got YouTube. It's got Twitch. It's got my blog. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. So, I saw that I was missed. Well, you were. You're one of my MVPs, my dude. Okay, now the thumbs did not have this particular hand gesture, so I'm going to have to either, mm, I could use the 3D tools. I think I'll try the 3D tools. Um, it's 
So Clip Studio Paint has 3D tools that are designed to make some things easier. I want to see if I can find what it is that I'm looking for. Um, ah, there it is. Okay. Okay. So good to know the hand tools on my menu currently are the bottom folder. So what I need is a hand holding something. Not this. That's grabbing a can. That's not the hand gesture that I want. Um... Probably hold umbrella is the closest hand gesture. But let's see. Or hold a can. Uh, Man, there are a whole bunch of different hand gestures here, aren't there? Okay, I'm going to pick something that's like an, a close enough approximation to what I need. Mm. I think hold umbrella. Hold on. Well, that wasn't the intent. I didn't want the entire freaking figure. I just want the hand. <sighs> All right. I have a better idea. Something that doesn't involve using 3D models. I have some reference images. Let me see if I can get those reference images. There they are. Okay. So there was a very industrious artist on Tumblr who made a whole bunch of hand diagrams and thank God that they did because this is going to make my life so much easier now. Let's see. Now I hesitate to recommend using other people's drawings as a point of reference. But in this case, I'm going to use this person's drawings as a point of reference. Because they are detailed enough and diagrammed well enough that I can interpolate. Let's see here. I'm actually going to flip the canvas on this one because this is a close enough approximation to what it is that I need. There we go. Okay. Specifically, these two. Just want to make sure that that hand is proportionate to the rest of the body.
Okay, for this, I got to pull up the previous page because I cannot remember which weapon Jamie had in their left hand. Because Jamie is currently holding two weapons here. Uh, in one hand is the knife of Leona, and the other hand is their usual sword. And I do not remember which, which weapon is in what hand, even though I had just drawn this last week. Memory of a goldfish. Okay, in the left hand was their sword. Got it. Okay, back to this. So then that means that part is there. I feel like I've gotten a bit better at motion lines in the last few pages. Links on links on links. Yes, indeed, Carlos. Links on links on links. Now I'm just picturing like Legend of Zelda Link standing on top of another Link on top of another Link. <laughs> I mean, there was the Four Swords Adventure where there was links on links on links. By the way, I'm going to likely drink a lot of tea today. Because yesterday I was doing some revisions on two different projects. And for those revisions, I read the story out loud. Because that's how I revise things. I read it out loud to see if it sounds natural. And also, weirdly enough, brain catches more punctuation errors when I read things out loud. Probably because... If you're reading a run-on sentence, you'll catch that it's a run-on sentence because you run out of breath partway through. <laughs> so pro tip, if you ever need to revise something, read it out loud. <laughs> But yeah, I was doing revisions on two different projects and that and that for me entailed reading out loud. And I was reading out loud for at least two hours. So a lot of tea was had yesterday and I will be having a lot of tea today. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta flip the canvas. Sometimes it's just easier for me to draw certain lines when the canvas is flipped.
Okay, I'm going to change up the position of the mock tot in this panel, I think. Now, one of the reasons that I like to draw the characters in different colors is because that helps you keep track of the lines a little bit better. Otherwise, it becomes a soup. Because I've definitely had that happen before, where the line work of the pencils just becomes a soup. A nebulous, like, bundle of scribbles. And it becomes really hard to ink on top of something like that. So... This is why I draw characters in different colors in the pencil stages. Okay, this, I'm going to turn the thumbnails off because that original sketch is too distracting. There we go. It's probably the easiest clawed hand that I have drawn for a while. In case you were wondering, the revisions that I was doing uh, for the two different projects, one set of revisions. Ah, oh, God. Sorry, I was at the gym earlier and my shoulders are still a little tender because I was doing a lot of shoulder presses. I, I have a new max weight that I can press on a shoulder press, but oh, good Lord, my shoulders kind of hurt. Um, but the two projects that I was doing re revisions for, that I was reading stuff out loud for, are, well, one's a novel. The other is a collection of short stories. The collection of short stories, I actually have it on hand. Hold on. Ugh, the collection of short stories is... Um, here, let me stop the screen for a second so I can show you. The Dance Macabre and Other Works by Sean McGavin. I did the cover art for this. I helped pay for the editors for this project. Um, and I just helped Sean get this thing to print. Now, it's not quite ready for sharing yet because I'm doing the final round of revisions and I'm noticing enough that I'm wondering if Sean uploaded the uh, correct version of one of the short stories in particular. <laughs> and it's the first one. <laughs> um, the others I have not read for final revisions yet, but th this is a final revision phase that I'm in. Um, so I've been reading stuff out loud and making notes. I have like two piles of notes already. Um, and I have not finished the first short story yet. Um, but, you know, I wanted to help bring this project to life because I like Sean's writing. I think that he's a really good fit with a lot of the other stuff that Fantasyville Productions, the little company that I run, has a hand in. Because there's there's fantasy stuff, there's dark fantasy stuff, there's poems, there's all kinds of things. Like, as soon as this is ready for publishing, I will definitely be sharing links around to, like, everybody and everybody. But it's 
in the final round of revisions. I've been doing some revisions. It's going to take a hot minute to do the final revisions because I'm noticing so many things, but that's one of the projects. The other project that I was doing revisions for is a novel. I had written this for National Novel Writing Month back in, I want to say 2018 that I wrote this story in. Um, I don't really have a title for it yet. The working title at the moment is The Name of the Forest Spirit. Um, and that's the working title because a lot of the mystery of this story is ultimately connected to the name of the forest spirit. But it's still being revised. It's still a work in progress. Um, if it gets to a point where I think it's okay to share, I would love to at least read out loud the first chapter in a future live stream. With all that said, let's get back to making comics. But it's because of all those, like, revising projects that I will be drinking a lot, a lot, a lot of tea. Because <laughs> I was reading stuff out loud yesterday, and I'm talking out loud today. It's just a lot of talking. And there we go. I'm actually going to draw some of the details of the face in a different color. We're going to make it blue. In case you're wondering, yes, this is a mouth that I am drawing on their arm. And this is also an eye that I am drawing on their arm. <laughs> Once I get to the inking stages, this eye is going to be crying blood because of where the knife of Le Leona slit <laughs> into the mock top. Yeah, we're going to get gory <laughs> in this page. Okay, now that I've got that pretty well penciled, I don't really need the reference anymore. Time to get back to the thumbs.
I'm actually going to move this arm a little bit. To me, it just looks like at this current moment that that arm is like popping out of socket because of the angle. There we go. That's a bit better. Let me draw the bag in a different color. Because right now, Jamie has a bag sitting on their back. Face in a different color. Move the ear up a bit. There we go. And toss, toss. <laughs> catching up on comments uh, earlier when I was uh, drawing the Mokta with uh, extra eyes and mouths. I mean, sometimes arms, arms have extra mouths and eyes. Took the words right out of my mouth that are situated on my deltoid. <laughs> okay. Let's draw us a Thomas. Now, Thomas here is going to be catching uh, the knife of Leona because Jamie's going to be tossing it right back, even though they had just used it. Admittedly, I could have staged this action sequence a lot better. This is what I'm working with. Make sure that the eye lines are matching. Shrink the head down a bit for scale.
flip the canvas a bit because this flipping the canvas can sometimes help with catching errors. Like here, I need to change the angle at which Thomas is tilting his head. It's also free transform the head a bit to make it not so long. Okay. That's a bit better. Now he's not quite breaking his neck. <laughs> Sloppiest hand that I've ever drawn holding a knife, but that's that's fine. It's fine. Actually, the guard is going to be down here. Okay. Now to employ this little hack. Circle where the wrist is. Circle where the shoulder is. Draw a line connecting the two. Find the halfway point. Draw perpendicularly. And there we go, placement of the elbow, ish. It's actually because of that that I'm gonna move the hand out further. There we go. Motion line included. Doot, doot. Okay. Line. Halfway point. Draw perpendicular. Elbow. That's a bit better. We're going to move this. No, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Didn't want to move the entire page. I just wanted to move the arm. <sighs> Don't know why Clip Studio decided to have a little hiccup there, but glad I fixed it. Scale this up just a wee bit. There we go.
erase some of these green lines here around the hand so that it's a little more legible. There we go. You know what? Let me know. Would you like me to continue streaming on Tuesdays? Have it be like a lurk while you work kind of situation? Or would you rather that I stream on a different day of the week? Saturdays, I want to try to keep consistent because Saturdays can overlap with conventions like HerdCon. HerdCon is March 5th. I've been in talks with the coordinators and they've agreed to uh, host one of my live streams, or at least have us collaborate on one. March 5th at two o'clock Eastern dated time, I'll be doing a live stream in conjunction with HerdCon. So mark your calendars for that. They have asked that this first of hopefully among many, and I'll get to that in a second, that this first live stream on March 5th be just like what I'm doing right now, which is showing you my process and how I draw a comic page. That said, they do want to potentially do more live streams. And if that is the case, we are in talks of what those other topics for those other live streams will be. Those would be after HerdCon, more than likely. It's still TBD. And I don't want to say too much more than that in case she's watching this because we want to try to keep some things at a surprise, but we are hoping to collaborate more and I would love to collaborate more with HerdCon. They are marvelous people. Here we go. Trying to pick an appropriate like pupil size for Thomas's expression here. Cause like basically what he's going through here is, oh my God, I just saw my friend beat the shit out of this dude that's been beating the shit out of the rest of us. And now they're asking me to be a distraction. Oh God. <laughs> that's, that's what's going through his mind right now. So trying to capture that. Yeah. Trying to capture that is proving to be Hmm, you know? <sighs> oh, um. I was talking about artistic influences on the legend of Jamie Roberts earlier in this stream. Among them, I had listed The Road to El Dorado and Mulan. Another artistic influence on this uh, comic series is Bone by Jeff Smith. Uh, if you have not read it yet, highly recommend that you read it. Um, it's honestly one of my favorite comic series, period. <laughs> um, it's the story of like three cousins who have been chased out of their hometown and they accidentally cross a desert into a fantasy world that is under turmoil. And it's like, hmm, <laughs> this sounds a little bit like the opening of the legend of Jamie Roberts and you're not wrong. <laughs> Because uh, the opening of Jamie Roberts is, oh, three friends are pirates. And they've been uh, chased out of their previous home place by the police, who were definitely after them for pickpocketing people. And now they are pirates. And during a pirate raid, they find a map. A little bit like how the main characters of Bone find a map whilst they're 
first beginning their adventure. The more I say this out loud, the more I'm like, oh boy, I pulled a lot more from Bone than I thought I did. Here's where I want to address things a little bit differently with the legend of Jamie Roberts, because Bone does touch gently on some borderline spiritual ideas and some like, oh, this is definitely magic that is native to this land that the main characters do not understand. That will be present in the legend of Jamie Roberts, but it is going to play a much more significant role. <laughs> uh, I mean, it played a significant role in Bone, but in Jamie Roberts, it is going to be even more so. Alas, as much as I would like to draw Thomas mostly shirtless, the way that the cloth is going to fall in this particular pose is going to cover up more of his chest than I expected. But that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's just fine. I'm going to see about maybe elongating that face a little bit more. It's a bit better. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm catching up on comments. God damn it, Carlos. That's a really good idea. Have you heard live streams? I want to have to pitch that to the person I'm talking with for the heard con streams because that's really good. And it's, I'm so mad that I didn't think of it first. God damn it, Carlos. <laughs> this is why you're my MVP. <laughs> One of my MVPs, I should say. Oh, God damn it. I'm going to have to write that down. Hold on. <laughs> and I'm writing this in green because HurtCon is hosted by Marshall University and their team colors include green. This particular shade of green, too. <laughs> yes, I know it's archived, but that doesn't mean that I go back and watch all of my archived live streams. I got to write this down before I forget in the moment. <laughs> Besides, Michelle might not be watching this. Michelle being the person that I'm talking with to organize this stuff. Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> no, seriously, thanks, Carlos. <laughs> I'm going to put that over there right by my uh, working page of the latest page of Puzzle Spell. Um, I work on Puzzle Spell one panel at a time because it's in black and white. Also, just keeping with the, uh, the habit that I started back in Inktober last year. Because Puzzle Spell is just a continuation of the comic that I started in Inktober last year.
Okay, this particular panel, this little one right here, I'm gonna change that up a bit. So I'm gonna turn the thumb layer off again. Now this one I'm changing up from the original thumbnails because the original thumbnail, it's not too clear. The implication with this panel that I was trying to get across is that Jamie is shrugging off the bag that they've been holding on their back this entire time. So I want to make that body language a little bit more clear with the pencil stage. The thumbnails got some of the idea across, or at least it reminded me what the idea was that I was trying to convey. I'm going to use the pencil stage to polish that up. I think I might redraw the character's left arm here. I mean Jamie's left arm, but for some reason my brain was like, it's their right arm. No, it's it's their left. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to redraw that. I flipped the canvas to test it. I'm going to redraw it. the canvas again. I'm actually going to move these lines a little bit. Mm -hmm. There.
rotate the canvas a bit. Oh, I flipped it back over. All right, I'm gonna draw the bag then. my tea. Yeah, I'll keep the streaming to Tuesdays and Saturdays for the foreseeable for the foreseeable future. If things go pretty well, and I feel the need to I may pick up a third day of streaming is it we're gonna keep that up in the air though, because like, between making comics, the freelance stuff that I do, and working at this craft store, stocking shelves as like a part-time job, like being able to find the fine balance between all of that is like half the time I end up canceling one stream or another. So adding in like a third stream in a week is mm, at the moment, not right now, <laughs> but maybe if things go well, and there's enough support for the idea, it's an idea. Okay. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to, first I'm going to get rid of this arm. Oop, delete. And then I am going to select this and I'm just going to move it. There. <laughs> Why the heck is this arm proving so difficult? There. Cool. 
Got it. Finally. Jeez. That put that pose took way too freaking long. Whew. It's not perfect, but it'll do. There we go. Ooh, Carlos here with the good ideas. My God, you're on a roll, my dude. When I was talking about a potential third day to stream, third day guest day, question mark? Possibly. I'm actually going to pin in that for later this year because I know, not 100% for a fact, but I know one of the anthologies that I am a part of will want to do like interview live streams like we did with Less Than Secret, a cryptid anthology. All the interviews that I did with the... Um, artists who contributed to that anthology are available in a playlist on my YouTube channel. If you're interested, odds are pretty high later this year, there's going to be a return of that kind of format. Hi, Jessica. Glad to see that you're here. Oh, you know what? Since we got enough viewers, I think y'all would appreciate this. I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a sec because I want to show off this dinosaur necklace. I got it for Christmas one year. My sibling Kia gave, gifted it to me. I love this necklace so much. It's a it's a dinosaur. I love it. <laughs> yes. Yes, OMG. I love it so much. <laughs> Dinosaurs and dragons. Those are my two favorite things. I love this dinosaur necklace so much. I wish I could tell you like what brand it is. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, Kia got it off of Amazon, but you would have to, Kelly, you can reach out to them and ask them. But um, yes, they, they gifted this to me for Christmas one year. It did, yes. Okay, but has it has it been named? Not yet. <laughs> if you want to name it. Um, Kind of want to name her Sally. She looks like a Sally, I think. <laughs> There's the head. Hi, I'm Sally. <laughs> no, no, I'm just being silly. All right, back to back to the art. <laughs> All right, we're going to get to this last panel. This last panel is, okay, okay, this is a, this is a tricky angle because what we're seeing here is Jamie is digging through the bag that is normally on their back. They, they are digging, and while they are digging, the Mokhtar is attacking Thomas. This angle... This angle might take me a minute. Okay. Oh, wait, blues for Thomas. Uh, we're going to have the bag be orange-ish because the bag is orange-ish in the, in the finished art. So Okay.
part of the reason I was so <laughs> about this a second ago is because uh, I don't like drawing folds in clothes at the best of times. And this bag that Jamie has is basically like a modified shirt with cording. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Mm, I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to turn this base pencil layer to like less than 50% opacity. Okay. Layer one. Here we go. There's the opening. Openings for the cords. See, it's this attention to detail that's like, it's simultaneously why I love comics and why they're such a phenomenal pain in the butt for me to draw. <sighs> All right. Pause for tea. Oh, I have to stretch my shoulders. Oh God. Oh God. This this shoulder in particular is like, please don't stretch me. I am aching. <laughs> but I need to stretch it if I'm going to cease the aching. Oh, man. Oof. I don't think I pulled anything at the gym, but it is definitely very tender. <laughs> Oof. Let's change up the banner. Back to the legend of Jamie Roberts. .com. Cause this is a page for the legend of Jamie Roberts. .com. <laughs> All right, now that we got that, let's turn the the base pencil layer back to 100% opacity and merge that layer that I was just drawing on back into that. Okay, got to make a new layer again. Okay. And there. Okay. So I came up with an idea for how to frame this particular shot. It's just a matter of getting the lines where I needed them to.
Turn the corner marks off for a second. Okay, first time that I've used something like that to indicate like a large swath. And the eraser layer up. So that I can do that. And turn this back from 105 to 20. Nice nib. Okay, back to the thumbnails. Pencil layer back. Okay. Sometimes it helps for me to switch away from uh, Clip Studio Paint and look at StreamYard because StreamYard gives me a window of what the stream currently looks like, which is kind of like another layer of separation between myself and the page. It helps me get a more objective view of what I'm looking at to an extent. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, you know what? I'll draw the mock on next. Yeah, here's where the Mokta is like really losing their patience.
Hold on, he just got sliced across there. Okay. Excuse me. I was raising my arm to feel how the muscles would sit <laughs> on the back and chest when raising an arm like this. Okay. I am so glad the mirror tool exists in Clip Studio Paint. And yes, that is the sideways mouth appearing on the mock toss stomach because it's absolutely lost its temper. Okay, switch over to blue so I can draw the Thomas. Okay, I need the corner marks to indicate where the edge of the page is. For scaling. <laughs> well, I'm done with my first cup of tea. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yes, indeed, Carlos. It is very hangry. Very hangry. Why do you think it has so many mouths? Just feed it pizza. It'll be fine. <laughs> But I had the lasso tool equipped. I did not. So I'm going to fix that. Had to move his head back a little bit. Had to move his eyes up a little bit. They were a little too low on the rest of his face compared to the rest of his face. <laughs> you know, I was thinking to myself earlier today, you know what I could play in the background while I draw comics? Hunter, Hunter because I just finished watching that entire series with my roommate, Alex, and it would be nice to just replay that because I love that series so much. And then I remembered the Chimera Ant arc and I went, oh no, do I have to rewatch that whole thing? <laughs> and there's a part of me that's like, you know what, I think, I think I will rewatch it, but then after the end of Greed Island, I'm just gonna nope. <laughs> Cause uh, for folks who are outside of the fandom, yeah, Chimera Ant Arc is typically where a lot of people drop off keeping up with Hunter Hunter. Cause um, oof, to give you an idea of how long the Chimera Ant the Chimera Ant Arc. To give you an idea of how long that arc even is compared to the rest of the series, um, on Netflix, the, the 2011 version of this anime, this is the version of the anime that I'm talking about, not the one that came out in 2000. That one's a piece of trash. But the one in 2011 adapted a pretty much the entirety of Hunter x Hunter. There's hiatuses. We'll talk about that in a minute. But it adapted everything from the beginning all the way up to the end of the chairman succession arc. To give you an idea of how absolutely lopsided the seasons are. Season 1 is like 26-ish episodes. Season 2, 26-ish episodes. Season 3 with the Greed Island arc, that one's about 26-ish episodes. Chimera Ant arc, 60 plus Chairman Succession Arc, 12. It, 
it's absolutely lopsided because the Chimera Ant arc just takes up so much space. <laughs> so, like, yeah, it's a good chunk of the show. <sighs> it's just so freaking long. <laughs> Um, some people have likened the Chimera Ant arc to the Android saga of Dragon Ball Z. I would argue it's a little bit more like the Boo saga of Dragon Ball Z. Having, having been a fan of Dragon Ball for as long as I have, and as somebody who loves Hunter Hunter, yes, I'm more ready to paint that the Chimera Ant arc of Hunter Hunter has a lot more in common with the Boo arc of Dragon Ball Z. Because both of them are overly long. Both of them can be entirely nonsensical. Both of them have creative decisions that make you scratch your head in disbelief. <laughs> both of them have creative decisions that are completely self-indulgent for the uh, manga artist in question. And the conclusions of both are questionable. <laughs> so to me, as somebody who's a fan of both series, that is the conclusion that I present to you. If you want to get into Hunter x Hunter and you want to watch the anime or read the manga and you read to the end of Greed Island and you're like, I'm going to bow out here. That is perfectly okay. <laughs> I would argue that's totally fine. <laughs> like, I do love the Chairman Succession arc. It is short, but I love it. I'm a little mad that it's so short, given that the previous arc before it was like 60 plus episodes. That infuriates me. But Chairman Succession arc brought the series back to its roots and it's good. It's just good. <laughs> Not least of which because it features Leorio, one of my favorite B-tier himbos, punching a character in the face who desperately needed to be punched in the face. <laughs> it is just so satisfying to watch. Okay. I do stand by my assessment of the Chimera Ant arc of Hunter Hunter is lopsided. Very, very lopsided. Also very just overly indulgent on Tagashi's part. Also, I will stand by this opinion. Tagashi handled the transgender character in Hunter x Hunter way better than he ever did in Yu Yu Hakusho. Mic drop. Except I'm not dropping this mic because this mic is the only thing that I'm able to talk into at the moment. Still, mic drop figuratively speaking.
but you don't get to see this transgender character until the chairman's succession arc. And in order to get to that point, you have to pass through the wall that is the Chimera Ant arc. Ugh. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not super duper easy to summarize the Chimera Ant arc because so much happens. <sighs> Takashi! <laughs> I don't know how it is that I suddenly got so okay at drawing boots, but I am very glad that I've gotten okay at drawing boots. It's probably because I've had to draw them so many frickin' times for this comic. The more, the more times you draw a thing, the better you get at drawing it. All right, the pencils are finally done. Oof, that took a lot more finagling than I expected. Oof, okay. But it's done. The pencils are done. Also, yes, feeding with pizza, always the solution. Regardless of what the problem is. Pizza. So good that even Flex Comics recommends it. Flex Comics, uh, they make t-shirts for nerdy people to wear at the gym i really really want their i really want some of their shirts they have one that's deadlifts and dragons and i love it so much you know what oh boots i misheard for a second you know what though there's a part of me that wants to know what you heard and another part of me that does not want to know. So. Never mind. Water break. Anyway, pencils are done. I have a little to-do list in my log book that I'm going to mark it off. Also going to mark off that I did this stream because I did. Okay. Heck yes. Getting stuff done. I like getting stuff done. All right. If I had the setup done properly, I would just transition over to working on Puzzle Spell, but Puzzle Spell is done traditionally at my drafting table, not digitally on Clip Studio Paint. So... Hmm, I'm just going to start inking. We have like 15 minutes left to the stream, but I, I'm going to start inking. Why not? Save the progress so far. And 
new layer. Thanks. And we're going to save a different version of this. I like to save one file that's just pencils and then one file as the actual work in progress. This has actually saved my butt a couple of times. <laughs> because I'll either forget something in the penciling stage and I'll have to redraw something or something happens in another stage that I have to start stuff over. It's just easier to have pencils be one file in one home and the work in progress be in a different home. I find anyway. All right, we're gonna turn the pencils opacity 50%. Switch over to the pen tool. I'm using G Pen because it's smooth. Now, for the most part, when it comes to inking, I go off of what I've laid out in the pencil stage, which is why I put a lot of effort into the pencils. But with inks, I still leave room for creative interpretation. Save progress so far. I'm actually going to get up and stretch for a little bit. I've been sitting down for a while. Bear with me. Oh, ow, my shoulders. Okay. Oh. Back to inking. Sometimes you just got to get up and stretch. I might actually raise the desk a little bit. I've been sitting down for too long. one of the many reasons why I kept this standing desk.
There we go. Just wanted to try to get these as close to the same angle as I can. Ooh, here in a second, whenever I get to inking the mock talk, I'll show you how it is that I ink the mock talk because it's done differently. Oop. Here we go. A little bit of a fun fact about this particular artifact that Jamie is using in panel one, the knife of Leona. Um, when the characters get this in chapter two, in like the very first panel of chapter two, it's revealed that this knife is able to carve into dragon flesh. By extension, that means that it can carve into Mokta flesh. That's because Mokta and dragons are not entirely of the same plane of existence as humans are in this story. They both come from another plane of existence called the Way. The Way in this story is where the spirits all reside, living and dead. And that is on purpose. It's on purpose that they're living and dead. It's just a, it's a realm of existence that sits parallel to the realm that humans occupy in this story. So close. There we go. Flip the canvas. I find it much easier to draw these motion lines at this angle than trying to do it the other way. Here we go. Okay. Now for the mock top, we're actually going to go towards the layers at the very bottom of the layer options. There's one called white. That's the white of the paper. To get the lines for the mock top that I want, I have to turn the white layer off 
and make the brush tip white so that the mock top can be seen. Because I ink it with white lines so that when it gets colored with black, it can actually be visible. Okay, we're going to go for a couple more minutes and then we'll wrap it up. Now, not all of the lines for the Mokta are white. Some of the details like teeth, I render in black. There we go. Oh, let me turn the corner marks off. There we go. Because I have a layer for corner marks that helps me track where um, the bleed lines are. Very important whenever this goes to print because it helps me know where the live area is, AKA the safe zone where everything is going to be visible and where the bleeds are, AKA where the printer is going to cut. Very important to know those things. And it is four o'clock. Before I scoot, I'm going to finish inking in Jamie's hair over here because I almost forgot. Okay, there we go. Sweet. All righty. We're going to have the screen hang out here for a little bit while I do my little wrap up announcements. So, thank you for joining me in today's stream. This has been a page drawn for my webcomic, The Legend of Jamie Roberts.com. New page drops tomorrow over at The Legend of Jamie Roberts.com. New pages get updated on the comic every Wednesday. So keep an eye out for that. I do live streams every Tuesday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern dated time. And you can catch those on YouTube or Twitch or Twitter. I'm on Twitter for the funsies. But you can catch all of those through my link tree. Let me get that link up. Linktree slash Kelsey D has all of the streaming services and all of that all figured out. You can also follow me on Instagram for any schedule changes and also for Fan Art February. I am participating in Fan Art February in my own way. Apparently, there's an official prompt list. I am ignoring all of them. I am drawing whatever fan art that I want. So, if you would like to see more of that, check out my Instagram. Link is on Linktree. If you're watching on YouTube, all of these links are going to be in the doobly-doo. Um, and if you're watching this on Twitter, links are all in my bio. I'm also on TikTok. I haven't been on TikTok for a hot minute, though. If I'm going to be doing an impromptu stream like of my traditional inking process, that's going to be either on TikTok or Instagram. Those links are going to be through my Linktree. What else? What else? What else? I have an email newsletter. It sends out once every Friday. You can sign up for that through my link tree. Um, I do have another live stream coming up this Saturday. Be sure to tune in for himbos and fighters and comics. Oh my. <laughs> it is an entire thing. It is going to be an ordeal. Uh, but just making all of the things. Um, 
trying to think of if there's anything else that I'm missing. Oh, if you have the means to, this is not a necessity. This is entirely optional. If you have the means to, I do have a Kofi page. If you would like to leave a tip, you can just go to Kofi or co hyphen fi.com slash Kelsey D Crawford. I also run something called the sticker of the month club. If you go to Kofi.com slash Kelsey D Crawford and you give on a monthly basis, $10 a month or more, you're automatically in the sticker of the month club. I'll just need a mailing address to send you stickers. I actually have stickers for the sticker of the month club all printed up. They just need to be trimmed. I'll show you the sheet for that. This month, they're getting Mr. Dino pride flags. Mr. Dino is a little mascot from another webcomic that I did called Validation. These are the stickers. They're going to be trimmed and put in uh, custom greeting cards pretty soon, and then they will be mailed out. So, yes, if you go to ko-fi.com slash Kelsey D. Crawford, you can choose to leave just a one-time tip. If you have the means to give $10 a month or more, you'll be automatically enrolled into the Sticker of the Month Club. Incentives. Um, I also have The Legend of Ajumi, which is a new mini-comic. It is available for free. Tips are optional. Easiest way to download that is going to be going to tinyurl.com slash T-L-O-A-M. It'll take you directly to the link in my Kofi shop. Keep an eye on the Kofi shop. I will be updating it fairly soon with some new merch because I was looking at my inventory and I realized, oh, dang, there's a bunch of stickers that are not on Kofi yet. I need to fix that. So that's coming soon. I'm going to also update with um, now that 99.9% .9 of The Legend of Jamie Roberts Volume 1's Kickstarter rewards have been shipped. I'm going to see about updating my Kofi shop with what merch I have left from that Kickstarter campaign and putting that up on my Kofi shop. Links for that will be at linktree slash Kelsey D. Also links in the doobly-doo if you're watching on YouTube. Link in my bio if you're on Twitter. If you're on Twitch, use the link on the screen. I think that's all for now. Tune in for a new page of The Legend of Jamie Roberts tomorrow at thelegendofjamieroberts.com. Next live stream will be this upcoming Saturday. Same channels that you are watching this on currently. 2 p.m. Eastern dated time, Saturday, I will be drawing himbos and fighters and comics. Oh, my. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm going to make myself a cup of tea <laughs> because I've been doing a lot of talking. Um, yes, absolutely. Rest and hydrate. Drink some water. This is your reminder to go drink some water. All right. That's it for now. In all honesty, thank you so much for watching. You are awesome.